that that's how we can view this function input is a composite object however it's a single object consisting of two other objects and output is of course some element in z but at the same time and in fact this you already know if you have gone through multivariate calculus f can also be treated as a function of two variables x and y and also f can be viewed as a function of two variables that maps the element x belonging to x and the element y belonging to y onto the element f of x comma y belonging to z so if uh, so the natural question arises which of these two uh, views we should take although these two views are different strictly speaking we shall not bother to distinguish distinguish them as different things because ultimately uh, as far as analysis is concerned whether you treat f as a function of a single variable or as a function of two variables at this stage it does not matter later on when we study analysis of such functions for example we try to differentiate such functions then it will matter but for now as a function whether you treat it as a function of a single uh, may i say vector having two components x and y or as a function of two variables it really does not matter thus for instance addition of natural numbers can now be reinterpreted as a function you see the, the way we treat addition it has always been a function of two variables for example we add 1 and 2 and that gives us 3 so if we are treating this as a function then there are actually two inputs one and two and that they give us one single output however this can also be viewed as a function of a single variable where the variable is an ordered pair that is 1 comma 2 and the function is giving you 3 so it's it's that thing as a function n cross n 
ตูเช่นดัตมาปส์ x ออกมา y ออนตู x ปลัส y รีคอลดัตเวนวีฮาฟตูโชว์That uh, there is an input and there is an output, but we are not really using any name for the function. You see, there is no f here. So then, to show the relation between input and output, we use a symbol like this. Okay, it is read like this: x comma y is mapped onto x plus y. If our function happens to be a bijection, it's one to one as well as on two. In place of this symbol, we sometimes write this arrow on both sides, and uh, such mappings are also sometimes known as perfect matching. Those of you who have got this concept in graph theory, it's actually nothing uh, different. Okay, so these are two things, and now what we do? We are now going to okay. So we have got ordered pairs. We have got Cartesian product of two sets. We are now going to generalize this to any number of sets, and that's where the next thing comes. Generalize the concept of ordered pairs to ordered triples ordered quadruples. Etc. And in general, we have the next definition. So this is definition seven. Ordered n doubles and n fold Cartesian products. Okay. Let n be a Natural number keep in mind that in uh, analysis and in here natural numbers start from zero okay so for us zero is a natural number so that that case is allowed. given Shall I uh, mention the objects first, or okay, okay? We straight away define it. An ordered n double. It's written like this: x i, where i varies from one to n. Is a collection of objects x i for 
i varying from 1 to n in this context x i is called the ith component of the ordered interval okay so uh, that's just the definition two ordered interval x i and y i are said to be equal if and only if x i is equal to y i for all i lying between 1 and n so far there is no problem with this definition the only thing is that n can be zero as such here we may have zero what happens when we have zero here from the definition you can see that this collection whatever we are calling it that we are saying is an n tuple has no object in it at all no component still it is considered to be an n tuple or rather a zero tuple or an empty tuple it is uh, it plays somewhat a similar role like uh, what the empty set plays in the theory of sets so just like that we also have a zero tuple or an empty tuple b of n denote this uh, like uh, how we ordinarily denote it x1 x2 and so on up to xn when n is equal to 0 the n tuple is called the zero tuple of course because n is zero or the empty tuple and is thought to have no component Note that we have only uh, de defined an n tuple. Now we have to define n fold Cartesian product. That thing is there. Given an n tuple.
एक्स आई ऑफ सेट्स नाउ द ऑब्जेक्ट और द कॉम्पोनेंट्स वी हैव इन दिस इंटरवल आर सेट्स दम सेल्स आर सेट्स एक्स आई we define their enfold cartesian product we use this symbol here this is greek capital pi deno uh, denoting product of uh, the sets x i as i varies from 1 to 10 so the enfold cartesian product to be the collection of all ordered interpolus x i such that x i belongs to the set x i for all i varying from 1 to 10 that is also denote by this more familiar notation product of the sets x1 x2 all the way up to xn okay so that is the definition of a, an enfold cartesian product which involves n sets note one thing carefully that just like in a in an ordinary n tuple components can be repeated for example if i write a four tuple this four tuples say 1 1 2 3 then, then the first and second components are actually equal so here we are considering an n tuple of sets so here the same set may appear and as such we may get a cartesian product that looks like this okay sets may appear and in fact all the sets may be just one set they may all be equal that case is also possible okay now next comes some uh, <coughs> oh that remark see just like how we defined ordered pairs to be some new type of object and we have 
assumed as of now that given two sets their Cartesian product is a set so just like that here also n, n tuples uh, have been uh, assumed to exist and once an n tuple of sets like this is given their Cartesian product n fold Cartesian product is also a set so this is another assumption it seems but all of these things can be uh, justified using set theory okay so again this definition simply assumes that n tuples exist and so do n fold Cartesian products However, this can be made sense of using set theory uh, and particularly we will see this in the second exercise after this section ends. <coughs> However, one can use the axioms of set theory to actually construct these objects see the second exercise In fact, uh, after this there is a remark where we will just give a hint of how that can be done. How we can uh, justify that this n fold Cartesian product is actually a set. So this is remark number 8. One can show that this Cartesian product is actually a set. Consider all functions that map i into x i with domain. This is the domain. and range union of all the x signs okay the domain is just the set of all natural numbers lying between 1 and n including 1 and n and the range is this union of all the sets that that are available to us of which we are taking Cartesian product in full Cartesian product and the power set axiom if you recall allows us to 
say that the collection of all such functions is a state. the power set axiom then guarantees that all these functions form a set and in fact there is a notation also for this set this is done this is the set set of all functions with domain this and range this that's how we denote uh, the set of all functions say from x into y that set is denoted like this and there are reasons for this notation which we will see in the next section okay the uh, notation here is not important i just wanted to show that it's like this it looks like this so the set of all functions with domain this and range this is its itself a set it's a legitimate set then using the axiom of specification one can construct the subset of this set of functions such that a function belongs to this subset if and only if x i belongs to x i for all i yes. clearly this subset is the enfold cartesian product Now, whatever we ha I have written here, it may be somewhat confusing, uh, looking at it like this. So, let us take a small example and see what we mean by this. And that example is not a part of the text, so I am just going to write it like this. Say we have uh, three sets. x1 is equal to 1 x2 is equal to set 2 comma 3 and x3 is equal to 4 okay so this is these are three sets given to me here we had n now my n is 3 here n is equal to 3 number of sets is 3 so the n tuple of sets is now a three tuple or an ordered triple that is this and we now want to construct the set this cartesian product 
like what we have said here okay so what we should do first we should consider this set this is the set of all the levels 1 2 and 3 and then we have to take the union of all the sets available to us that is another set 1 2 3 4 union of x1 x2 and x3 okay the power set axiom then guarantees that all these functions all functions with this as domain and this as co domain or range in our language that uh, collection itself is a set that's what power set axiom says so if we consider all possible functions whatever you can think of say you can map all the elements onto one all the elements onto two all the elements onto three or four you can map one to one two to four three to two say so like that you will get many functions that set is, that collection is a set and that set is this it's denoted by this symbol the set of all functions from this set into this set this is domain this is range okay now from this on this set you can uh, apply an extra restriction or we don't need all functions we need precisely those functions where this condition is true namely the image of one under that function that you are considering should be in x1 image of 2 should be in x2 image of 3 should be in x3 okay so such functions have to be considered now if we really try to see try to look at such functions in this case in this example what shall we get of course i am not going to try to write all the functions in this set it will be extremely large actually it can be shown that this set has 4 to the power 3 elements this number uh, may give you an idea of why we have a notation that looks like this the number of elements in this set of functions is the number of elements in the range raised to the power uh, the number of elements in the domain anyway but our aim is not the whole set our aim is to only Con consider those functions which satisfy this extra condition so we want our function uh, we can uh, draw a diagram like this so we want our function to map one into an element that belongs to x1 there is only one such possibility namely one so our function must map 1 onto 1. Then we want our function to map 2 onto something that is in x2. So image of 2 is either 2 or 3. So that means this is one uh, possibility. This is another possibility. then 3 should be mapped onto something that belongs to x3 so that means 3 has to be mapped onto 4 there is only one element so 3 has to be mapped onto 4 in this case also so that gives us exactly two functions so this cartesian product will have exactly these two elements which are functions but you are going to tell me that uh, this makes no sense why let us calculate this cartesian product uh, simply like how we will calculate without going to functions and such things what is this one cross two comma three cross four how will the elements of this cartesian product look 
they are going to be triples ordered triples because there are three sets involved in every ordered triple the first coordinate comes from this set where there is only one element so the first coordinate can only be one the second coordinate can be either two or three and the third coordinate will be four so we will have one two four or one three four now you tell me that uh, that is you are arguing that these are some things and these are entirely something else these are functions whereas these are ordered triples in practice we do not distinguish between these functions and these ordered triples this may take you by surprise why why should we not uh, distinguish between them because after all they look completely different things strictly speaking they are different but if you really think about this ordered triples what do you need to specify this ordered triple you need to say what is the first component what is the second component what is the third component first second third so that means you want a you want to be able to label the components you want to know what their positions are and also what the components are the positions are taken care of by these labels 1 2 and 3 and the components are uh, shown here by the function so the function mapping 1 into 1 tells you that the first component is 1 the second component is 2 and the third